A national initiative will help deep tech startups refine business ideas, gauge market needs and even meet the right investors. The year-long $15 million program will merge existing efforts at the National University of Singapore and Nanyang Technological University. It will also be extended to other institutions. Now, launching the initiative, Deputy Prime Minister Heng Sui Kiet says the move will close the gap between research and the marketplace. Venture building in this area requires, again, tackling topics from bringing together different expertise. And uh, the scientists are very good at, you know, the scientific breakthroughs, but may not be so good at the entrepreneurial know-how to build this, the startups. The program will start early next year and it aims to train up to 300 startup teams over the next four years. This includes developing skills in research, design, business and engineering. Industry leaders will also provide personalized mentorship and access to venture capitalists. Now, for more on the state of the deep tech industry here in Singapore, we're now joined by Emily Liu, Assistant Managing Director of Innovation at Enterprise Singapore, and Associate Professor Benjamin T, Vice President of Ecosystem Building at NUS Enterprise. Prof T, Ms. Liu, welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you. Professor T, uh, we've just heard about the Graduate Research Innovation Program. Uh, what brought us to this uh, collaboration with NTU and the expansion of existing programs Basically, is there a, a particular gap that's needed to be plugged? Right, thank you. I, I think that there's not really a gap that we're trying to plug, but really to figure out how we can quickly turbocharge a rapidly maturing ecosystem. Together with NTU, we mm -hmm. have a pool of over 4,000 intellectual properties, a lot of deep know-how in incubation programs over the past two decades. What we hope to do is to bring innovation to a much more collaborative state where all the stakeholders are able to rapidly support in many different ways the rather long and arduous journey of entrepreneurship. Mm. And what, through this national program, we are actually opening up to all autonomous universities as well as A-Star Research Institutes. It will allow us to pool our resources together mm. to create fast lanes for some of our most ambitious founders to rapidly bring their innovative ideas to the market and impact, importantly impact the world. So it's really about bridging the gap between scientific research and right. uh, market application. M Ms Liu, if we were to take a step back here, what is the current state of deep tech, uh, the deep tech sector here in Singapore? Um, the Singapore government has made um, significant and structured investments into research and innovation over the past three decades. Mm. So today we have built a deep well of very good scientific research um, within the universities and ASR research institutes. And we also have now um, 47,000 research scientists and engineers in Singapore. Now, so this gives us a lot of potential to uh, unlock mm. in terms of uh, driving uh, new uh, economic engines of growth. So in terms of, um, you know, well, opportunities. I think we are seeing the transformative power of deep tech into so in solving the global challenges that face us today. So we saw that very clearly during the COVID-19 pandemic, where we developed a, a vaccine in record fast time. And you know, there's also other there are also other crises such as climate change, or, um, the decarbonisation that's facing us today. What about uh, challenges that you've observed uh, in the industry over the years? What are some of them? Um, for the challenges, I think uh, I think the first is within Singapore. I think we need to grow a, a more robust funding ecosystem. So deep tech is a very different uh, different game. I think from sort of general commercialization of mm. technology. I think deep tech requires a very long gestation period. So we need smart and patient capital investors who know how to uh, nurture these uh, startups uh, to grow and to scale. So I think we need uh, we need uh, really a lot of partners from around the world who have already you know been there done that who have already grown uh, deep tech startups to, you know to come to Singapore to work with our startups here. Mm. Like, I think another challenge I think is that we do need to grow that pipeline of um, innovators, um, entrepreneurs, and founders. And this is where the National Grip, Grip Program comes in very helpful to build that uh, pipeline of founders within Singapore. And all of these really take uh, time. Yes. And a lot of patience, as a Professor T earlier has mentioned as well. Uh, Prof T, you are an entrepreneur and you have set up a few startups uh, in the health and deep tech industry. But based on your experience, what are some of the, uh, what are the, the types of support that startups uh, would naturally require? And how can various stakeholders help in their growth? 
Yeah, I think that as a startup founder, I've gone through many pains of making a lot of mistakes and figure out how best to quickly go to market. Mm. A vibrant ecosystem requires broadly three things. Risk capital, talent, access to technology and specialized facilities, especially when it comes to deep tech. Importantly, customers. So in order for a startup to quickly grow from Singapore, we have to provide different stakeholders that bring together different kind of resources needed. And that's why through this national initiative, I think that the ability to pull all these different pockets of uh, know-how that may not be very apparent at the beginning, but when put together, unlocks many synergies. That's what's really needed. Um, in, in terms of the, the risk capital we have over the past decade, built up a very good network of venture capitalists through our various incubation programs at NUS, such as Block 71, where we are actually a global network. So having this access to global customers and markets are critical for our deep tech startups to get success. I think Emily mentioned patient capital. This is something that we are, we are really trying to develop, especially through a university lens, which mm. take a very long time frame when it comes to technology and, and research development. So you were talking about risk capital, talent and patient capital. Um, initiatives like National Grip, um, Miss Liu, it was announced today with a $15 million commitment. Uh, we also heard yesterday that an additional $440 million in funding will also be made available to startups. How do such initiatives help to address the challenges that we've been talking about here? Yeah, thank you for raising that. So um, yesterday, uh, Deputy Prime Minister Heng um, announced a $440 million top-up to the Startup SG Equity Incentive Scheme um, that is administered by Enterprise Singapore and the Economic Development Board. So that really, really catalyzes a smart patient capital into the ecosystem and does this through two, two, two main ways. Mm -hmm. So the first is that uh, we are able to become, uh, do the fund of fund approaches uh, to into some of the top uh, funds around the world, attract them to take a look at the Singapore ecosystem and see what are the startups here that they could work with. Mm -hmm. The second is that actually the funds can also be channeled directly into deep tech startups um, to direct investment or co-investment approaches with our partners. So I think this, uh, this kind of capital is very useful for deep tech startups. You know, they, they really require that long runway for that technologies to mature. I think importantly, I think this gives us a way to work with the top um, venture builders um, from around the world. Mm. Actually, venture builders are a very special niche group of firms that, you know, take the technologies from zero to one. Mm. So, you know, after, you know, they have been incubated by NUS uh, and uh, the National Grid, Grid Program, they can also, venture builders help them, you know, for, assemble the teams, they can give them the first check, they can also avail their, you know, network, corporate networks to the startups. That's very important for, to, uh, for the go-to-market strategies. All right, uh, Ms. Liu, Professor T, thank you very much yeah. for coming in thank to you. share with yeah. us about this. That was uh, Emily Liu from Enterprise Singapore and Associate Professor Benjamin T from NUS Enterprise.